As anglers, we're getting more and more obsessed about the weight of fish we catch, the size of fish we catch, how fast we catch them, that we often forget that fishing is all about enjoyment and, and getting out in nature and enjoying it. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. I've just come along to the river and I'm just gonna have a day's fishing. I'm gonna fish for chub, roach, perch, whatever I fancy. I've got a multitude of baits with me and I'm just gonna fish. I'm just gonna have a rove along this river, see what we can catch. And I think in this day and age, it's all a bit lost. We're all trying to catch bigger and better fish. Whereas today I'm just gonna fish for fishing's sake. And uh, hope you're gonna join me on what is gonna be a lovely day's fishing on this beautiful stretch of the Great Ooze. So, down the river, and I just fancy doing a bit of float fishing. And in here is my absolute pride and joy. And no river session on a float would be complete without this beauty. Now this is my Normart Titan. And I spoke about this on the Mick and Joe vlog, but not everyone has seen it. This bit of beautiful kit is 30 years old, something like that. And it got left to me by a family friend who sadly passed away uh, with his battle of cancer. And um, he left me this. And I got it lovingly rebuilt by uh, Bob the Rod, who uh, used to work at Foster's, uh, the old Foster's as it was, and he lovingly rebuilt it, took the eyes off, re-whipped them on, and it, I'm not going to say it looks as good as new, because it's still battle-worn, because it got used a lot when Stuart used to own it, but it is just a thing of beauty, and every single time I get it out, it just brings a smile to my face, and it's kind of what it's about today, we're just fishing for the love of fishing, and uh, every time I get this out, I, I just love it, so... That's going to be my first part of call. I'm going to put a river uh, float through this river, bit of bread on, see if we can't catch a chub. Uh, and then if not, we might catch a few roach, but yeah, it brings a smile to my face. And I'm sure there's bits of kit out there that you love using as well, just as much as I do this Normat Titan. Even though we're going down a pleasure angling route today, there's still things we can take from our match fishing routes and prep's one of them. Obviously, if you're coming for a, a short session where you're moving about and roving about a bit like we're gonna do today, having your rigs already prepared on winders and stuff so you can just get the rod out and fish is just brilliant. So I've got my rig that I set up lovingly yesterday with a beautiful float, which I'm gonna show you in more detail later. And uh, I'm literally, ready to fish. I've got my, my uh, rester box set up and I'm ready to fish. Simple as that. So just because we are doing something a bit more pleasure angling orientated, it doesn't mean we can't take bits from our match fishing routes. I'm hoping for a chub. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run through with a piece of bread flake on, no feed at all. I've got that float on, which is three and a half gram, incidentally. Um, and I'm just going to have like 20 minutes running a piece of flake through just seeing if there's a chub about. If there is one there, we might catch it. So let's get it out there. I'm going to chuck it quite well downstream because I know that I need to be down. There's a lovely tree at the bottom of the swim and it just looks so chubby. And because there's hardly any flow, I need to cast downstream to start my run to get the presentation. So, and that looks great. So let's just see how that performs. Lovely big float. And you can almost see the with the leaves as they are, they can you can see the, the flow line. So that's fingers crossed. We get a bite or two. And if we don't get any bites, just putting a piece of flake through, then we'll try putting a bit of bread mash in and there's I'm sure there's some roach through here, so we might catch a few roach if we do that. See that that bread's now just taking on that bit of water and you can just see it on the float now it's obviously 
taking on a bit of water and it's taking effect on that flow. That, it's just going through lovely actually. We've just got to see if there's any, anybody there. I'm going to go too far down because if I do walk one down there, there's a lot of snags on the inside. I can just, uh, I can just see it ending in tears if I hook one right down there. River fishing, cup of tea. What's gonna be better than this, eh? Just try and get it on that line. Just imagine there's a few chub hanging on that dead tree over there. I've not only got my me, me mashed bread to have a little go with next, that's the next plan. If we don't get one on this, we've also got some maggots. It's obviously loose feed and uh, just never know, that could be a good approach for the old roaching chub. It's going through nice though. Had a bite. Right in the spot where you'd expect to bite as well. <laughs> oh. Just got in front of that tree, exactly where you, textbooks would tell you where the chub live. That's where I had a bite. Oh, that's encouraging anyway. Get it down there. Notice I'm casting well downstream. Now, it's, there's hardly any flow on the river today. And if I was to start my cast up here, or just downstream, it'd take me forever. I know where the fish are gonna be. They're gonna be around that tree. It's low, it's, it's clear. Yeah. Got a fish. And it's a chub. Not a big one, but it's a chub. Oh, look at that. And that is mega, look at that. <laughs> Lovely little chub. Bit of bread. We had that bite of the chub before. And whether it's the same fish, who knows? What a cracker. Amazing, well chuffed with that. Can't believe it. Let's get him in the net. You never know, might, might be in for a good day here, you know. So I'm just, uh, no point feeding anything to start with. If we're, it's always worth, if you, if you are coming on a river, it's always worth just running a piece of bread through, especially in these conditions. The river's clear and if there's any chub about, they'll soon sniff that bread out. So anyway, I was half way before that chub rudely interrupted me. I'm chucking right downstream because there's just no point in, I know the fish are going to be down there, or I think they're going to be down there. So we might as well get our float down, fishing properly, in time for it to get to that hopeful killing zone. 
just wasting time by doing it up here. When we start feeding by hand, I will feed up here, hopefully to pull the fish up, of course, but to start with, but before you introduce any, oh, another bite. Before you introduce any feed, you've kind of got to go to the fish a bit. Well, this is encouraging, isn't it? Three bites. What was it that said on Passion for Angling? Large lump of mother's pride. Anyone who's seen it will know what I'm on about. So yeah, the, the old overarm cast might not be very rivery, but it's effective when I'm trying to get well downstream and uh, get to where I think the fish are going to be. Something about these floats, I actually got them given as a Christmas present <laughs> a few years ago and they've always just sat there on my desk a bit, a bit too nice to use almost. Beautiful like handmade Avon floats. But I thought today was the day with my favourite rod on a nice bit of fishing like this. Today was the day that they were going to come out, wasn't it? Quite a truck to be fair. Because the funny thing is, and I know it sounds odd, but every time your bread comes off, or you strike your bread off, you're obviously feeding the swim, so you do, obviously there is starting to be a trickle of bread going through now, so if there are some hungry fish around, we will start getting more indications, which is kind of what's happening. Oh, another little indication there. Could be roach, of course. It tends to be if there's a chub, you know, you get a positive whack under and he's on but yeah even that just tiny little bit of bread coming off as insignificant as it is the swim does tend to get better another little sprightly chub to be fair I'll slip the net under that one <laughs> oh yes, absolutely magic. What can be better than this, eh? Look at that, I can even rest my thing on there. Look at that little beauty. Not a record breaker, but who cares when you're catching them on the float like that, on a bit of bread, on the favourite roll, on a beautiful float. Who cares? Oh, the sun's even coming out. Anyone who's lived in the UK for the last few weeks <laughs> will know that the sun has been absent without leave. It's been grey for ages. There's a little fish. And uh, having a bit of the old current bun out is most welcome. Have a little chev. A little baby one, look. Swing him in. Beauty. Nice little chevin. Now, there's obviously a lot of fish here. I mean, I'm getting a, there's no point changing at the minute because I'm getting a bite every run through, so I'm reluctant to change really. It'd be nice to get into some better ones, of course, but let's not be greedy. and then just take what we're given at the moment. But yeah, I do fancy getting the old mash going. Monster mash, get the monster mash in. And I might just sit, have a cup of tea, <laughs> and feed it for like 20 minutes up here, and we might be able to get the fish to come up to us, because they're obviously hungry, because we're getting a bite every run through. So if we uh, feed it for a little while without actually fishing, Oh, oh. oh, that fish is like 
<laughs> tearing up down into the edge. Thought for a moment there, I thought we'd got, a, got ourselves in a spot of bother. That's chub and a nightmare. And even these ones are not, not massive chub or anything, but on like nice little float tackle like this, very, very, very welcome indeed. And sprightly. I mean, they're like eight, ten ounce fish. Beauties. Absolutely. Fin and scale perfect, like a new, like a new penny. Well, this is great, isn't it? <laughs> I'm having a great time here. Oh, I'm in a tangle. I think we're so, you know, I'm a match angler. I mean, granted, I do a lot of this sort of fishing as well. I think we're all guilty sometimes, just getting lost in the uh, competitive element of fishing. And there's some beautiful fishing to be had in this country that we just never get round to doing, I suppose. I, for one, I come on here all the winter, right the way through this river, different stretches and whatnot, and have some wonderful fishing. And it just breaks up the match fishing there really nicely. Not everyone's cup of tea, but how can you not enjoy this? When you're fishing for chub, obviously as batch anglers we're desperate to get in, but sometimes it can be best just to give them some free food for a little while without catching them. Oh, another little indication there. Come on, my beauties. Um, yeah, just give them some free food, if that maggots or bread or whatever, and then have a little, little rest, have a little cup of tea, and then uh, try it like 20 minutes later, because then you can have a good, a real session then. Ooh, come on. Right, let's execute the plan. Let's get some mash going through. Have a cup of tea. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll catch even more out of this uh, lovely swim on the River Ouse. We just had that little, I want to call it a feed break, a cup of tea, fed the swim for a little bit, just throwing regular balls of bread mash in, and we've just caught several little chub straight away, like, and almost like now where I was getting bites when I was just using the flake on its own, like the fish aren't there, they're, they're up here now, where the, where the bait's going in, so it's, uh, it's looking real good at the minute, really good. Like we're going to have a lovely little bit, bit of fishing here before we uh, move on or go into a different swim. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm just putting quite a small piece of flake on actually for, for me. I like a, a nice big bit, but obviously the fish are relatively small, sort of 10, 8 to sort of 12 ounce, I'd say. Little chublets. So we don't want to uh, go too gung ho. And what I'm trying to do, I'm just throwing a little ball in and then I'm just trying to cast a float in and around that area. It's pretty simple stuff really, but feed first, get the float in. And then obviously that, your hook bait's then traveling with that lovely bit of, you can, cause it's so calm and clear today, you can see the little bit of cloud and stuff drifting down the river. And I mean, if I were a chub, I'd be in it, I think. It just looks great. Not doing anything fancy in terms of presentation. I'm literally just, letting it run through and it's fishing lovely. I'm not holding it back or anything. There's not really any flow or anything to work with, so just letting it go through is quite nice. I mean, that's a small one, but it's still great fun to catch on a float. It's just a li lovely little chub and a just beautiful fish. <laughs> great to see. Sign of a healthy river, I suppose. Yeah, this is just, I thought we'd get a few bites actually, but I didn't think we'd get as many bites as this. I say I fish here a little bit, not loads this area, but I've always caught a few fish here, but this is really promising. I 
and there's some other swims a bit further down where a bit more tr overhanging trees on each bank and I really fancy that for a few roach as well so maybe the next swim we try we might, I might go in with maggots instead um, and have a little run through with some maggots that might be quite nice a nice change put a different hook on and maybe a slightly lighter hook length because we're still on that 016 just straight through at the minute which is great for, for the old chevin it might not be quite to the roach's liking i'm going to try and my next cast i'm going to try and pitch it as far across the river as i can get it right in front of them trees because it looks great doesn't it it's quite low down that one got off playing quite hard because <laughs> Even these little ones, they will, they will do you, if you're not careful. It's a nice fish. Okay, I want some. Lovely. Lovely indeed. Yeah, these size fish, they will definitely try and get you in the uh, trees, if, <laughs> in the edge if they... Uh, have half a chance. How enjoyable is this? Chub like that on the on the float. We'll fish here for an hour or so. And I think when we move to the next area that I really fancy having a go at, I think we'll go in with maggots on that one just to mix things up and we'll get the catty out and loose feed. I think that might be good on a day like today. I think before we do though, I've got to have a go in this little backwater that's behind us. I've got a little tip rod, a nice little sensitive tip. Like I said, I've got some lobworms and I fancy. Just seeing if there's a perch or two in there, I'm sure there is. Might be a perch or two here to be fair. Especially down this long edge, it looks lovely for a perch down here. What's going on with my float? course I'm sure you're thinking why don't you just stay here and blast maggots and, I, and I'm sure I'd catch loads of fish if I did that but it's nice to explore isn't it and try different areas it's, it's what we're doing we're trying to be mobile and uh, get the most from our day really just trying different bits there you go I'll just put a smaller hook on and uh, actually punch in a bit of 10 mil bread on rather than putting the big flake on and I've uh, caught a couple of chub actually but they're on the small side and judging by how much bread that that little fella's got down its chops we might have had the best of this swim now and I think that's going to be my last fish probably caught I don't know a dozen 15 chub up to sort of 10 12 ounces so it's been a lovely little start for our day but I don't want to be rooted to one spot and I'm I'm itching to be honest to get in that little backwater with a couple of lobworms and just see if we get a bite and I'm going to just give that 20 minutes in there and uh, and that'll do us so I think we'll quickly wrap this up we'll move into that backwater for 20 minutes give it a, a little cast and then uh, and we'll move to a swim further down we're going to fish some maggots further down and see if we can catch some roach maybe a few more chubs so yeah what a cracking start to the day beautiful weather uh should you have a little look at what we've caught Okay, so that's the first swim. We've got, I don't know, there's maybe a dozen, 15 little chub up to sort of, I don't know, 10 or 12 ounce. Absolutely beautiful little fish. And that is just an hour's fishing with a little bit of bread. And it's just the first swim of the day, which is the beauty of this kind of session. So I can't wait to see what the river gives us in the next area. But like I said, I'm gonna get some lobworms out and uh, have a little go for a perch or two in this little backwater. So let's get these beauties back. Absolutely glorious, look at them. Right, so we have just packed the stuff away, ready for our next move. But before I do, got to sneak through these bushes. I've got a few lobbies in the tub. I've just got a landing net rod resting my little link ledger rod. And uh, let's get through here, because this looks mega. It could be really good in here, or it could be terrible, but we'll never find out unless we have a go. It's a bit of a... It looks like people have been in here, though, so I feel like if we sneak through here, we might... Have a chance of something so yeah this looks like nice little bit of water back in this look at this big snag bush it's 
sneak down here. See what we can't find. Just got a really light pivot in here and a little link ledger. So this is a proper bit of me because I've just literally come and sat down. I'm just going to put on a whole lobworm because if there's a perch at home, he's not going to be able to resist that, is he? Whole lobworm. I've got a lovely light half ounce glass tip in, which I think is quite important for perch. I'm just going to flick it next to this little snag bush to start with. anything home it might might not be anything but it's it too good to uh, not have a go just tighten up to that I've got a really light quiver tip because one thing I've learned about perch and chub when you're fishing little link ledges for them is the hate resistance so you want a lovely soft glass tip if you can find them so it's hard to find these days the old glass tips but if you can find them they are helpful for this kind of fishing. You've kind of got to let the bite develop a bit if you do get one, of course. But that looks so perchy. And we'll have this cast here for five minutes. And then we'll chuck one up there because that looks a bit more of an open area up there. And then if we don't catch anything, it doesn't matter, does it? I just had another flick. I think I tried, started in front of that little snag. Nothing. Give it a couple of minutes, but nothing. And I just, just chucked it up this more open area. And it felt a little bit deeper there, so looks quite nice. And just imagine this connects to the river much lower down. And you can imagine that when the river's high or certain times of year, the fish come in here just to get out of the way. I bet there's certain times of year where this little backwater is a great place to fish, as these places often are. Sometimes a bit of movement can bring a bite. But I've got to be honest, I thought I would have, if there was one there, I thought I'd probably have had a little indication by now, because they're such instant feeders, the old perch. I think if you were about, you'd have him. Bit of a sideways sweep past the there, Oh, yeah. Deserve one for that. It's a lovely cast. Interesting with the old glass tips because so few rods, you, you know, the carbon tips are so popular now. And glass tips have kind of been forgotten about. And when you're actually bite fishing like this with link ledges and stuff, the glass tip makes such a difference, especially for perch and chub. The fish that take the bait and mouth it and move off of it, and then as soon as they feel any sort of resistance, they kind of let go. And I remember when I first started doing this kind of fishing a few years ago, chub fishing and stuff, I was using carbon tips. And what would happen, you'd get your bite, your first sort of inquiry, and then nothing would develop as if they felt the resistance and then dropped the bait and knew something was wrong. Whereas I switched to glass tips, and you get the first little bang like you do off chub and then all of a sudden it'll just gradually tighten up and you have a proper bite as if fish just need a bit of time to take the bait and perch you like that. And I think if you can, particularly for this kind of fishing, you can find a little rod that takes glass tips. This is like an old 11 foot carbon active. But if you can find an old rod that takes glass tips, it's really, really good. And it's just like a half ounce one, ever so soft. But next, next part of call is to get into the next swim down from where we would cut them chub and I'm going to fish maggots and I'm going to put, get some hemp out as well and at least feed maggots and hemp and 
hopefully get another bit of nice fishing going. In fact, let's do that because I don't feel like we're going to get a bite here because I feel like I would have had one by now if there was one about. So let's get back on the main river. It's worth a little try. I'm going to I'm going to actually rescue that worm. He's going back in the pot because I could probably use him again. Oh, there's one getting out. They're like your pets, aren't they, lob worms? Like a little pet. So let's head back onto the main river. It was worth a little go. And uh, hopefully, catch some more fish on the float. Tell you what's a bit of good karma. Picking up your shit and picking up other people's shit. Don't leave it on the bank, it's disgusting. Right, so that's swim number one done and dusted. Let's get along. I really like there's a swim up here in sort of runs in between some trees. Looks great. Fancy it for a bit of action. There's a little swim here that I like the look of. Yeah, this one. Have you ever seen a nicer float swim than this? You get yourself on this little bit here. At least feed some maggots there. Oh, this looks great, doesn't it? it? Opens up lovely. So yeah, I'm going to do a bit like what we did with the mash, but I'm going to do it with maggots. I'm going to loose feed some maggots, a bit of hemp, and do it for like 20 minutes before casting in. And you never know. I mean, it looks great, and if we caught chub there, you'd fancy this for some chub as well, wouldn't you? Let's give it a go. Okay, so we've been trickling in maggots and I know I said I was going to trickle maggots in for 20 minutes but I couldn't resist and I, I lasted about 15 minutes before <laughs> the urge got the better of me and uh, straight away it's obvious that there's quite a lot of fish in this swim. Dace, I've had a little roach but these dace are like really nice fish and I've changed how we're fishing now. We've gone on to maggots and we're catching lovely dace like that. I mean, who wouldn't want to catch them on a bit of nice light tackle? But anyway, I'll just quickly show you the float. I've kept the float exactly the same. I've still got that, well, it's three and a half gram uh, Avon style float on. But I've put my Olivet higher up and then I've got a little bulk, about a foot below it, and then two number eight droppers below that. And then I've got an 012 hook length and a little size 18 Camasan B520 hook. So I'm trying to refine things now because I'm thinking, well, there might be some roach about. It'd be nice to catch a few. The light is dropping a little bit. Even though it's middle of the day, that time of year where it's that getting a bit dingy. And uh, we might catch some roach now. But if not, we'll love these days. And I'm just loose feeding, quite aggressive actually, maggots, because there's obviously a lot of fish here. It'd be nice to get through to give myself a chance of maybe catching a chub or, or whatever, a big perch, who, who knows? Early signs are great in this swim. And it always amazes me how we didn't catch a dace or a roach or anything in that other swim. We just caught those little chub. And it just shows you, doesn't it, sometimes that baits make all the difference. And that's enough. Oh, look at that. Are we on the River Wye or what? I mean, look at that for a dace. Amazing fishing. Just on single, like I said, just a single maggot nicked on really lightly on that size 18 and it's a bit of an awkward cast I've got this bit of a nuisance branch above me and then quite a lot of foliage behind me so I'm having to be really careful in the cast and watch it out but it's worth it because the fish are there and if we don't catch any amount of roach in this one doing this we'll go even further down and then we'll start again and we might even fish hemp and tares exclusively for the last last little trick of the day and uh, and give that a go because it is that time of year where the roach sometimes they just all you need is hemp and stuff to catch them and this is just crazy <laughs> how can you not enjoy this sort of fishing i mean see if we catch any chub actually because So we've 
caught them lovely chunks of snow. Oh. 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 <laughs> that tree, I tell you. If I don't lose a float in that tree, if I, if I lose one of these floats in that tree, I'm, go, I'm climbing up. I'm going, to, I'm going to get it back. Even if it means falling in, I can't lose one of these floats. It's quite interesting. When I, I, I plumbed it up, and it's probably two foot deeper than the last swim, this one. And obviously, there's so much cover here. You can see why the small fish would be here. Um, it's like a bit of a slack along this edge. It's quite perchy. Got to be careful not to get too giddy with the bait. Because I tell you what, there's no shortage of fish here. Unbelievable. Lovely days. This is just this is just fishing in it. This is just fishing in a nice location with a nice rod with a nice <laughs> trying a few different swims. How can you not enjoy doing this? If you don't enjoy this kind of fishing, you've kind of lost yourself, I think. Oh. All right in the same spot, the bite. I'll be on double maggot before we know it. Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky cast. I'd have loved to, for this style, like, flick it out, but I just can't with that tree. Can't get it in the right place. I must admit, this having a Olivet, I obviously used to use, always use like a bulker shot. But using an Olivet is so much better, you get hardly any tangles. And when I used to use them big ugly like treble A's and stuff, I always used to get little wrap overs and whatnot, but with that Olivet, it just, just fishes lovely. Cast great. Obviously it's line friendly as well. What's going on here? There's... Catch fish for a few seconds, I'll start to get worried. I can't imagine it'd be long before all these socks come to the finders. in here for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. First chub. It's just another one of those little barrel chub, but great fishing. And this is, this is beautiful fishing. <laughs> it's pretty much a day's every cast in now. I've sort of settled down and got the fish, kind of feel like I've got to grips with where they are. And then that little chub there is exactly what we want to be seeing. Mention me floats really briefly, and I want to show you them in a bit more detail because as you see, I've got a lovely little selection of uh, all sorts of little beauties in here, actually. And I've got your more traditional sort of Dave Arrow stick floats. Very nice. I've got some lovely uh, Drennan Crystal Avens, which fish beautifully. I've even got some Crow Quills, which Mick Bassett made for me. Which actually, when it's pulling through quite a lot, when I'm fishing for chub in the winter, a float as big as that is really good. They just fish beautifully. Uh, lovely handmade floats, but the ones we've got on today are things of absolute beauty. And like I said, I think I might have alluded to the fact that they were Christmas presents. 
Uh, I have no idea where they've gotten from, but look at that. That is like craftsmanship at its best. There's like little bits of writing on there, lovely, gorgeous bits of whipping. The bristle, the, um, the tips are so bright, you can see them. Just gorgeous floats. And they're not all like, they're not show pony either, because when I'm fishing with them, they're fishing absolute, absolutely beautifully. They're controlling really nicely. We're seeing the bites because of that tapered tip. Just things of beauty. And I think every river angler has a lovely little box of floats like that, don't they? And I love getting those out and giving them a good fish with. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna try and catch a few more days out of this swim. And the light's starting to go now. So I think we might as well try and catch some roach on hemp and tears, maybe in another swim. Just one last swim to try before we go home. But uh, it's been great so far. So I'm gonna uh, crack on with this. Catch a few more days, and then uh, we'll maybe have one last move. Okay, so swim number two. We've been fishing in here now for, I don't know, a couple of hours maybe, and we've had a lovely little bit of fishing. Much different to the other swim where we were catching those little chub. We were catching, we've caught dace and roach mainly in this one. We've had, a, we've had a few roach actually, and as the light's sort of dropping now, it kind of really feels roachy to me. Now, I think if I was to get the hemp and tares out here, I think we'd probably catch quite a few roach, but me being an inquisitive uh, so-and-so, I'm really intrigued by, there's a real open bit of river down there where there's no cover at all. And it, I've walked past it loads of times and wondered if there's any bites to be had there and I just feel like getting a bit closer to the van and trying a new swim, there's another roach, um, and just trying a new swim that I haven't fished yet and uh, that's all part and parcel of this kind of fishing so let's just try and catch you one more on this and then we'll mix things up, try a new area and uh, see if we can't end the day on a few roach. Could, I could easily get the hemp and tears out here because I think the roach is just starting to switch on now, but my own, uh, out of my own curiosity more than anything is the fact I really want to try that, that bit down there because it looks, looks really nice. Maybe put a lighter float on and uh, mix things up a bit, maybe put a little stick on or even a, a little waggler maybe and uh, give that a go. I'll just... Uh, but this has been, it's been a bite every go in really, off, you know. No, no like real big fish, but dace and lovely dace up to, you know, four or five ounces, which on this kit is, is good fishing. So, very nice indeed. It's just, it's just like, oh, that king, two kingfishers just shot through. Brilliant. It's just like any old any river fishing really. There's all, when you get a stream of maggots going through, there's always a little hot spot. And for me, if I go too far down, I don't really get a bite. I think the fish are generally in the area where my loose feed is sort of trickling through. I'm gonna enjoy on the next swim. It's gonna be a bit of an easier cast and I'm looking forward to that. Because <laughs> this little cast is quite tricky. There's like very little room behind me and then this tree up above, I'm not making excuses, but it's not, not the easiest of swims to fish. Despite it being lovely and open. So let's just, come on, let's have one more. And then we'll uh, quickly wrap these bits up, have a look at what we've had in the swim number two. and then we'll get down and see if we can't just finish the day off with a few roach. And if we don't, it doesn't matter. In fact, let's, let's do that now, because I'm worried that if we leave it too long, we're going to lose the light. So let's do that. Let's head down there. We'll have a quick look at what we've had in that uh, little short time frame that we've fished here. And then we'll move down a bit further down the river.
Right, so we are in our third and final swim. And this is a totally different sort of swim. And I've walked past this dozens of times and never fished it. Uh, I've always gone up where we started. And um, this one looks really nice for, for a bit of roach fishing. And I've had two bites. And both of them have been roach. So we're at that time of day now where the light's just fading. And I feel like this is our best chance to maybe put a few roach together. Now I'm fishing, I'm feeding maggots just to get the swim going, but I'm also backing it up with a bit of hemp. And I've got some lovely tears that I lovingly prepared. And if we can, I'd love to catch a fish on that before we go. But I sort of sat down and I was, I don't know if we're gonna get a bite, but we actually had two bites and two roach. So there's every chance we could get a few. And like I said, the light's just fading now. It looks perfect for them. Depth is, I was gonna change my, my setup, but the depth is almost identical. The only change I've made, I've dropped down a hook length size. I've gone down onto 010 now and a, and a, a nice light 18 hook. It looks much more like, if I hook a chub here, I'd be surprised. And there's no snags or visible snags anyway. So I feel like I've got a good chance of getting them out even if I did. So I'll probably like jinx myself there, but it kind of feels like I'm fishing out and out for roach here, so the finesse that I've got from a light hook length should pay off. Now, no bites that run through. This is like, I mean, what? How can you knock this for a day's fishing? We've tried three different swims, we've had bites in every swim. Just Absolutely fantastic. Now both, interestingly, both roach I've caught so far have been quite well down the swim. And there's no, it's a bit different. The other swims, obviously we had a, a bit of cover in terms of like overhanging bushes and whatnot. Whereas this one is very much a, an open sort of swim. So it may take a little bit of time, a bit of feeding just to get them fish to come up. We'll work at it. I gave it, like I said, I gave it a nice quick plumb and it was virtually the same depth. All three swims have been, you know, the first swim was a touch shallow, but pretty much within. Ah, fair sign, that was much higher up the swim, that one. Is it another roach? Sure. Oh, no, it's a dace this time. Look at that. Cracking, look at that. What oh, a beautiful fish. And that's all within 10 minutes of starting, you know, we just pinged them maggots and a bit of hemp out there and, and we're getting bites instantly, which just shows you like, why these short sessions are so good because you don't always need to be here all day to get a few fish. I'm Feeding me maggots are much lighter than was in the other swim, just because I'm... I mean, there could be some chubby, of course there could, but I feel like I'm purely fishing for roach and dace here. And I don't want to overcook it, because it was evident in that last swim we were in, every time I tried to up the bait, it, it didn't really pay off. Oh, another little indication there. Now, if it had been shallow, I probably might have put a waggler on, but it's just a touch deep, really, for the old waggler. Need a longer rod. This is a 13 foot rod, and it's a bit tricky for the waggler. Just coming into what I think is like the. That's where I've caught my roach, like in that sort of area. The oh, light's fading, it's a bit harder to see the float. Right down at the bottom. Oh, that was rude, wasn't it? Never mind. Only a little roach. The only thing about obviously roving about that sometimes is a negative is the fact that you know you get in a swim and it's not as good as the one you were in before, and it's feeling a bit like that at the moment. But that's half the enjoyment, like exploring different areas and looking for, sometimes you can find some like 
true gems. Like I found from a big chub fishing, I found my best swim has been one that I've walked past a million times and I just decided to try it one time and it was a barren looking swimmer like this and it, it's where I've had some of my best fish from so sometimes it's good just to get a try these areas and you just never know there could have been a load of roach sat here but as you can see the light is oh, disappearing fast actually it's uh what time is it let's have a look nearly four o'clock which is almost uh home time but amazing thing with these clear rivers in winter these beauties these lovely red fins when the light goes like this this is often your best time to catch them and well, I haven't been able to get any bites on tears. I have been able to get bites on maggots. And it's not easy. It's like really tricky fishing, but it's enjoyable because you've got to get your float going through exactly right. All the fish are at the, there's a shadow of a big tree there. And all the, from that down, you've got a chance of one. Feeding really frugally. It's like really crafty sort of roach fishing. It's good, really nice fishing. I've got that light little delicate hook on and it's making all the difference. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not catching a load of roach, one every chuck in, but it's really like, every fish feels like a little victory at the minute. And it is noticeable that now this light is dropping, they're definitely getting more confident, getting a little indication then. And it's all about getting that float just to go through. And then when I get it into the, that sort of area now, where it is now, I just hold it, just lift that hook bait up and then let it go and oftentimes my bites are coming i'm just hanging on to it just a just a touch and let it let it go and oftentimes my bites are coming straight after that i dare say we i think you like especially if you fish a pole if you could, could fish hemp on the hook match your hook hemp's rubbish but i think you would oh right at the bottom of the swim again amazing how they won't come up Little roach, so uh, it's proving crafty today. But we've had, I don't know, a dozen of them now in this swim, and everyone feels like a little, little victory. But we're kind of at the end of the session now, really, because it's uh, the light is fading fast. Never know, I might even get the chub rod out and <laughs> go for a chub later. I often come out at night time and uh, fish for the chub. But it's just been a wonderful day's fishing. I mean, we've had bites in all the swims. The only place we didn't catch a fish is in that backwater. But I dare say if you went in there now, now it's obviously get the lights going. This is perch o'clock really. You might have a chance of catching one now. It's just been a brilliant day and just shows you how much fun you can have and exploring the river with minimal tackle is just, Lovely way to spend a day, really. Well, you, didn't even have to, you, don't, you don't even have to commit a full day to it. Come out for the afternoon or a few hours in the morning. It's lovely. Look at that, right down. That float is dotted right down, right at the bottom of the swim there. Oh, God, I'm a fish. But totally opposite of what's happened in the last swim where we had the fish coming right up above the feed. Not happened at all here. In fact, the fish are actually sitting way, way below the feed, which just shows you how two swims could be totally different. And I've only had one dace in this swim, whereas that other swim was obviously prolific with dace. It may just be that the roach are hanging back a bit more than dace are a bit more aggressive as a rule. And they're just maybe hanging back a touch. Like I say, when I get it just probably another five metres or so, I'll just hang on to it and check everything, and then I'm fishing properly when it gets into the uh, hot area. <clears throat> just check that, just mending my line there, I'm just gonna. Use my finger, just trap it, let that hold on to the float, just, a, just, a, just for a second or two, just to let that hook bait come up and let it go again. And there we go. It just shows you, doesn't it? Sometimes you just got to show that hook bait to the fish. 
and they're not massive fish, but it's a lovely way to fish for them. And every one, like I say, it's like a, it's actually a, it's a day, it's a tart to dace on. Every bite just feels like a little, <laughs> little victory. So there we go, what a brilliant day's fishing. Like I say, we started on those chub, we had 15 or so lovely chub. Then we had them dace and roach in the middle swim. And then we've come here, trying something different with the hemp and tears. It hasn't really worked, but we have caught a few roach on maggots just to finish the day. Light's gone now, so I'm gonna have to wrap up, unfortunately, but it's just, uh, I just hope that some of you are inspired just to get out, minimal tackle onto your local river and just give it a go. Cause sometimes fishing isn't all about seat boxes and side trays and poles and stuff. Just getting out and doing a bit of fishing like this can be really enjoyable. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again on the next video.